Holy mother of Geppetto, a coalition of the entirety of Europe has just distorted against us. Ever wondered why girls don't talk to you? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's because you have not yet restored the Roman Empire before 1600. My name is Ludi, and today we will be restoring the good old Romans as Aragon before 1600. In fact, I will challenge you guys. If I can form it by 1580, then you have to subscribe and leave the bell button on. Our current situation is as follows. We have most of Anatolia, south part of France with the Balkans, but we did not get the Burgundian inheritance and nobody will be getting this. So sadly, I will have to break this alliance and attack the Aragonese myself. We have a small coalition that has started forming against us. These guys have minus 43, minus 46. They should be out of the coalition, but they're not. First thing on the agenda is we'll be attacking the nation of Croatia so we have most of the Balkans afterwards and on the other side of Europe we'll be also attacking a Bourbonnet which is only allied to Salzburg for the time being. Before we go deeper into the video today's video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN has the best deal on the market right now for just $139 a month you can take advantage of all that it offers. It protects you from malware and stops ads as well as trackers and even notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data you can get the best deals when shopping online and enjoy better speeds when watching your favorite online streaming service as well as the ability to change your virtual location thus accessing video content not available in your current country. As a Romanian living in Japan, I use Atlas VPN to check on the latest movies available back home. You also have unlimited devices that you can use Atlas VPN with a single subscription, so take advantage of the special 3-year subscription offer that Atlas VPN has right now for just $139 a month and a 30-day money-back guarantee by using the link in the description and pinned comment below. After a fairly short war, we can peace out Salzburg here and we are gonna go just for the money that they have and even for the war reparations. We really don't want much from them. We just wanna fully annex Bourbonnais. That is the main goal. Bourbonnais is out and coalition-wise, it is a couple of nations in this, but AE is literally just a number. That is why I am fully annexing Croatia over here. We can also get military tech 11 and we can form the nation of Spain if we get a hundred illegitimacy but I don't want to do that I actually want to go for a special achievement the consulate of the sea and once I integrate my vassal here the uh, Byzantines take over the Venetian cities as well as integrate Naples and take a couple more cities around here I can get that achievement also oh no Johnny himself has perished and mr. Nacho mama is now the Emperor Nacho mama is pretty aggressive so uh, he is gonna be a attacking Luca since we have gotten the claim on Luca and we also have one claim on Savoy that we'll be using but Luca first of course as uh, they basically have no alliances right now. Since Milan is also a viable target here with a buttload of course we will be gunning for them too but I'm pretty sure I can get them diplomatically so I'm just gonna start improving relations with them. Oh the truce is over with the French they don't really have many troops left. One of the most asked questions in you for is how do you actually dodge the coalitions and how do you avoid them well first off you need to realize what nation is gonna join the coalition my case that's pretty much all of Europe but I'm confident enough that even if they do trigger the coalition which they very likely will I'm still gonna win that war so the Venetians made the mistake of canceling the proclaimed guarantee in Albania which means I can basically eat them up meanwhile on the French side here we're gonna piece out the Bretonians first Oh, actually, they have a colony in Barbados. Tadiago, and now for the Piste de la Résistance, the French Nation. I pretty much can take all the stuff that I want to take from them. I'm going to take a little bit of cash, too. And look at this bad boy over here. It is a coalition of the entirety of the world, all the way to the Livonian order. Welp, it's all good, though. Nothing to worry, nothing to worry. We will be A-OK. -okay. Going to be concentrating all the lands that we took, so it's cheaper to core up, of course. Truce with the Ottomans is done, that means we can attack them. Before we do that, clearly we're going to be 
be finishing off uh, the Albanians over here. Luckily enough, when we attack the Ottomans, we also bring in Aquayunlu. From the Tunisians, we won't be getting much. We really just want to get some money from them and make sure that we have a truce with them. Since the reality is that they were also part of the big coalition that is forming against us. In fact, it's getting out of Europe now. Pretty much everybody in the world that knows about us hates the schnitzel out of us. But that means we have to strike before they strike and make sure we uh, take them all out. We'll fully annex Akko Yunlu, even though they have a lot of cores. It's not going to help me too much, to be fair, because I don't want to get any more vassals. I have enough as it is, and I'm going on the whole A doesn't matter tactic, so I don't care. Let the coalitions trigger my boys. Look at this. Let him come. It's been five years since I broke the truce with the Burgundians. That means we can attack him now. Gonna call in the Austrians and Kobeladrate Florence together with the uh, Holland as it's gonna bring a few members of the coalition. I did not Kobeladrate any of the coalition members, but they still joined. So because of little Holland, I can piece out each one of the members of the coalition separately as if it was a regular war rather than this being a coalition war. Oh wow, the morale difference between my troops and the Hungarians is absolutely massive. Clearly we won that battle and once we manage to take over Pest, we're gonna just white piece them. I don't want to be in that war for too long. Apparently all the coalition members that joined in this managed to call in all of their allies. So I'm at war with way more nations that I like to be. Other nations have joined a second coalition against me because they feel brave now since I'm at war with half of the world. What is it with Hungarian troops and uh, attacking me in box? Like, do they really just want to get stack wiped? Oh, Lord Jesus, we got a second coalition. This one directly declared on us. And we are officially at war with pretty much everybody that ca we can be at war, basically. Anisa has fallen. And despite not needing this land, I am going to fully annex them as I got too much aggressive expansion with them at this point. And I don't want any other nations joining in future coalitions against me. Usually it's nations like Al Jawuf over here, one province miners that declare the coalitions. So I do have a very strict nobody left alive policy. The war is going pretty well in the west. We pretty much occupied most of the lands that we're interested in and we can also peace out Savoie. But before we do that, we actually will be piecing out the Hungarians. We lost Pest, which we had occupied for quite a little bit, but we can still make peace with them for 6% war score and we get an amazing 114 ducats. I am going to take two provinces over here and that's pretty much it. I don't want anything else from them. I just want to split their country up in half and the rest of the stuff I'll be taking as uh, cores for my uh, beloved vassal Milan over here. And we can now free up our troops to fight against uh, these boyos that are now trapped on this side without the uh, possibility of going back into their lands. We've pushed the English from the second coalition out of uh, the mainland. Situation on the eastern side is pretty dire, I'll be honest, and we have to bring some troops over here, but it's going to get a lot better once I um, peace out Burgundy, because most of the nations here are actually Burgundian nations. So hear me out. I know that we're basically fighting close to half a million, actually more than half a million troops, but the logical thing to do right now since the truce is over with the Venetians is attack them for the reconquest of uh, our beloved vassals cores. It might seem like a bad move, but it really, really is not. They have very few troops. They would otherwise just join one of the coalitions against us anyway, because they have a lot of aggressive expansion with us. Also, make sure that you fight whatever battles you get your hands on and you win these battles, as well as scorch earth when you need to, to gain a little bit more momentum. That's what I did here, which is why my troops did not get engaged by the Burgundian army. And in return, we will be engaging them right now. We will actually be slackening recruitment a little bit. Should be fairly easy to win this battle. We got a lot more morale. We have five morale at this point and they only have four. And there you go, Toulon, no more Burgundian troops. We have basically integrated both of our vassals in Syria and in Byzantium. So we got to start integrating Eretna with Orléans, but I cannot do it when I'm at war. So I have to make peace. That means we really have to start piecing out people left and right. Rebels are a problem too. We do have naval superiority, however, in the uh, Mediterranean Sea, since we have the biggest fleet around here. Can peace out the French though. I will cancel their alliance with uh, Venice, Savoy, and that's pretty much it. The only two alliances I care about. I want to have a short truce with the French so I can attack them again in a couple of years and uh, finish off whatever they have left. Oh boy, look at this, yo! We got military tech 12. That means we are one of the first nations to get guns and 
And that also means I'm gonna absolutely wreck everybody. Come at me, coalition bros. That is gonna be a full annexation for Florentia because we really want to uh, have all of the Italian lands. I know it's giving me a lot of extra aggressive expansion, but the reality is that we want these lands to grow our own economy first and foremost. Oh, brave Regensburg troopers. You are not gonna be around for much longer, are you, sir? Because I'm gonna stack wipe you over in Mantova, senor. There you go. No more Regensburg army, my boys. We also will be taking Zeeland from the nation of Holland. Volgast is what now? They're gonna give me the course to f what? No, 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 Volgast. Thank you for talking uh, shop with me, but uh, I got some different plans for you, sir. Holy mother of God, they're actually giving me all of this? Damn, this is gonna save me so much time having to fight with uh, the English afterwards. This puts me in a little bit of a pickle because now I have a lot of overextension, close to 200 overextension. This is absolutely insane. That means I gotta wait before I peace out the Burgundians otherwise my country is gonna collapse the rebels so I gave it two years during which we pretty much managed to core up most of the stuff we still need to wait for a little while but I also want to peace out so I can start integrating my vassals so I'm gonna do that right now I am actually gonna be piecing out the Burgundians by taking all of the proper Burgundian lands as well as a little bit of money and when it comes to the Venetians we will be taking the coastline from them including the island of Corfu so now basically everything here is ours we we just need to finish the Venetians off in the next war by taking whatever they have left in uh, Italy proper, that is. Also, look at this, boyos. Albania just sprang out of the dead, and now we're gonna get a claim on screw them over. They lived for far too long. Meanwhile, in North Africa, all hell has broken loose, and our overextension is 255. Oh, boy. This is gonna be fun, isn't it? I'm gonna have to restructure my armies as well, because I'm gonna be fighting a lot of rebels here. And our first choose to expire is gonna be in 43 that is when we need to, no actually 44 we need to attack the French so fast forward to that point oh boy I thought my truce was gonna expire in 45 but it expired right now so I have to attack the uh, French this might take a little bit longer than I expected because Tunis is quite a massive nation it doesn't have too many troops but it definitely is gonna be a little bit of a pain to siege down all of these provinces fighting a disunited France is ridiculously easy as you can imagine First off, we'll be dealing with their allies over here, and I'm not really going for too much as I don't really care about these lands. But I will fully annex Provence despite not co-belligerating them because if I don't do this, I would have to fight another separate war later on, and I really don't want to do that. Oh, we can actually piece out Brigands too since it's in this war. Daryaku, and now the French. Let's see how the Moroccan war is going. I think we can piece out these guys. We just want a couple of provinces. This is all we want. We want their capital in Alexandria. <laughs> Apparently, they're they're not okay with that, so we're gonna have to continue this war. Not piecing out until I get what I want from that particular war. Pretty much everybody is gonna join in this coalition once their truce is over. So I have to plan it out. I need to make sure I'm fighting two separate coalitions once more. Otherwise, if it's just one, it might be a little bit too much. You ain't getting away from me, Mamluks. This is a fight to the death, and I am talking about your death, of course. Oh, looks like Savoy is back on the menu, boys. Don't mind if I do attack yo a little bit some Savoy, yo. They're what now? Allied to the Venetians? Well, that is perfect because that means I don't need to wait for 15 years to attack the Venetians. I can uh, shorten that truce by a buttload. Let's bring the troops that we had fighting the French over into the Savoyan lands and assign a proper general as well. Let's see if we can piece out the Egyptians. Now, we can piece them out. All right, oh, I do want my swarm to be uh, locked up in the coalition war in Europe once that triggers. As I have a strong suspicion, it's going to trigger pretty soon. Oh wow, Karako Yunlu's friends are as good as your own friends, my boy. We're also taking a few provinces for ourselves as uh, we want to never go to war with Savoy ever again. Essentially, we don't need the Swiss part to form the Roman Empire. Commonwealth also formed. That is pretty cool, not gonna lie. I love the color that they have. It's probably one of my favorite colors. And our war here is going absolutely amazing. We're gonna continue to push into these guys and conquer all of their lands that we need to form the Roman Empire. At the same time, we are also going to be attacking the Papal States. We've been
been getting some claims on them and our truce just expired on the first of this month. That Yago, now we should have a fairly short war against them. We didn't co any members of the coalition, so that means technically nobody else should join except these three nations. Unsuspecting Papal State troops were not ready for this war. They got stuck in Vipen because of their own ignorance. Holy mother of Geppetto, a coalition of the entirety of Europe has just started against us. This is gonna be the war of the century. I might be a little bit too bold here, but I do think that we're gonna win this battle as we do have the city of Zagreb ourselves. And unless they reinforce this in time, we have way better troops than they have. And there you go, we did abso freaking lootly win that battle. Noise! We're gonna continue to screw them up like that and just basically wipe out their armies wherever we can. We have kind of given up on the Balkans as it keeps getting attacked by a massive amount of armies. And we are trying to defend the uh, French region essentially and have most of our battles in this region as well. We do need to bring our armies from this area however, so we are gonna piece these boys out. We're gonna take this amount of land as we need this land in order to form the Roman Empire and it also means we can free up some of our legions to come into the western part of the empire to defend it. Booyah Shaka round two against the Bohemians and guess what? We are winning once more. Still, we're bringing our troops to the French side. We don't really want to stay for too long in uh, the Balkans. Bring it on Frenchy or actually hold up. Is this Bohemia again? Am I fighting only Bohemia in every single battle? What? I think it's time to give a bigger round of applause for Bohemia for being the biggest puck champ of this particular war. Oh lord have mercy we need to take the city. Nope they attacked us. This is gonna be bad. I think we're gonna actually lose this battle. We are definitely holding our own however. I really want to bring these boys from here. You know what let's do it. Let's actually bring our boys from that province. If we had force march this would be a lot easier but right now oh there you go we got intercepted. I'm gonna retreat them right now so that I can uh, give the other army a fighting chance. All right, well, at least we managed to kill some troops in Barois. All of our war score is basically from taking out smaller stacks and avoiding the big ones. They are slightly willing to piece us out. You know what? I'll take as much money as I can take from you. Seven is four. What? How? You guys have a lot of money. But yeah, I'll uh, piece you out with that because this is actually pretty painful war. Jesus, mother of God. You guys have enough rebellions over there? It's like, what is this? Every single different culture has their own separatists, bro. Oh, beautiful. The rebels are now attacking Karakoyunlu, so I just need to unsiege these provinces. That's pretty much it now. We've been at war for a good two or three months, so now we gotta go to war again. This time, we're gonna go to war with the Burgundians, and in the process, we're gonna be taking care of uh, Lorraine also, since uh, Lorraine is a part of the lands that we need to form Rome. We've been delaying the peace deal with the Papal States for a while because once we have the city of Rome, which is right now by the way, we do have a triggered modifier, the occupation of Rome since we are a Catholic nation and we are neither Italy, the Roman Empire or the Papal States. After one month you get the Papal States event, either you get one stability hit or you actually give the city of Rome to the Papal States. We will however be taking the stab hit, we're not gonna let them become an independent nation. They can spawn in another place somewhere else within the HRE or within another Catholic nation's lands, not our lands. I got you now, you filthy Lorrainians, trying to run away from me, eh? Well, it doesn't work like that, sir, and uh, your nation is now a mine. Oh, hey, look at that. The Papal States just popped out. They want all of the provinces I have cores on. Well, you know what? You can't have them. Get out of here. They still want to have an alliance with me, though. Wow, okay. Alrighty, do you still want an alliance after I've conquered? Conquered most people around you. I don't think so. All right, we're gonna take these lands as well from uh, Burgundy. I don't think I need Luxembourg to form the Roman Empire, do I? No, I do not actually. Just these four provinces. Take all the money they got to make them poor. And that's pretty much all we need for the Roman Empire, except two cities here, one over here, of course, the Venetian lands, and integrate our vassals. In pretty much any Roman restoration run, the biggest issue you're gonna have is either overextension or integrating your vassals and subjects in time. So what I'm doing with Milan over here essentially is I am actually seizing land from the subject interaction and then I am coring up these lands. They're super loyal so I don't care about them going disloyal. Remember though whenever you seize land you have to core it up but do take advantage of this. It makes it a lot easier integrating your vassals in a shorter amount of time. So we're gonna attack the English right now and we have a bunch of ships that they don't actually have. We in fact have naval 
naval superiority right now, and we're gonna use that to start invading the English Isles. Navally barraging London feels just absolutely amazing. Oh dear, looks like our beloved leader over here has passed away and we got a 542. Honestly, not as bad as they can get to be fair, so I'm actually quite okay with that. We can also attack the Venetians in uh, two months, I believe, in August. Venice truce is over, that means it's a killing a time, yeah. Alfeta Cadabra. Hey, it worked. All of the United Kingdom is now occupied by us. I guess you can call this editing surprisingly enough though the english did not even finish off the scots so kind of disappointed in this ai personally we're gonna peace out the austrians first so we can get these two provinces that we need in order to form rome and similarly we'll be taking these lands from the uh, english themselves namely york and london proper now we have everything we need to form the roman empire we just need to integrate naples portugal milan well hello there integration of naples this means that we now have the consulate of the seas achievement we also managed to get traditional player in this playthrough since naval tradition was never a priority for me beforehand with the integration of naples we unlock a bunch of missions over here with the last one mary nostrum coming at some point in the nearby future near you and hello there integration of portugal it would appear as if i have every single province that i need to form the roman empire Empire. All I need to do is click diplomatically form the Spanish nation first so I can inherit the nation of Castile and even go for the new traditions and ambitions Dariago. and now look at this bad boy over here boys 1580 January and we have re-established the Roman Empire I'm gonna go for their traditions and ambitions so I can show them off a little bit and please do ignore the coalition map mode because it is a lot of nations in there now that we've actually switched to Rome we have the Latin or Roman culture as our primary culture so all of the previously Aragonese provinces are now Roman we're gonna have to culturally convert a lot of provinces as such we also have a ton of monuments now we got the one in Madrid and the one in Granada which I'm gonna start upgrading right now actually there you go we have it at level one and we're gonna bring it up to level three eventually I've also upgraded the other monuments around especially the one in Athens Athens and the one in Cairo. I made it my priority to upgrade these two because it gave me minus 40% advisor cost reduction, which is why I've been running level 5 advisors the whole freaking game pretty much. I also upgraded this one to level 3 because it gave me minus 10 idea cost and together with the one in Cairo, another minus 5, made it really easy for me to get my ideas unlocked earlier than you would have expected it to happen. So if you guys want to see me continue this Roman Empire run, and maybe turn it into a world conquest as the Roman Empire. 10,000 likes. I know it's a lot. I know. But this video would really take a lot of time to create. Also, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. I really want to get to 100k subscribers so I can get the verified tick by the end of the year. And don't forget to take advantage of the Atlas VPN offer by using the link below. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.